The Signal Oil Program. The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. I am the Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the signal oil program, The Whistler. Remember, let every traffic signal remind you, with signal... New Signal Gasoline, you do go farther than ever. Look for Signal's big yellow and black circle sign that identifies those popular signal stations in seven western states from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story, The Seeing Eye. There was only one love in the life of Captain Martin Quiss. It wasn't money. He'd long since made more than enough to retire comfortably. And it wasn't women or liquor or self-indulgence. Captain Quiss was part of the sea. It had been his home in his life since the day in 1907 when he signed aboard a purse seiner out of New Bedford as an apprentice seaman. But a love as strong as that of Captain Quiss for the sea can be dangerous. It can blind a man to more important things like human decency and justice. It can lead to compromise and ruin. The closing chapter in the career of Martin Quist began on a stormy night off the Florida Keys aboard the steamer Carson City out of New Orleans bound for Portland, Maine. The night wind pushing up strong from the east had reached gale strength when the cabin door burst open. What's the matter, Grant? What are we running here, a ship or a nursery? Now, wait a minute. You wait a minute. Well, dress me properly or not at all. All right, Captain Quist, sir. That's better. Now, what's the matter, Mr. Grant? The first mate's drunk again. He just ordered me off the bridge. That's a serious charge, Mr. Grant. I'm not making charges, Captain. This isn't a pink tea at the Mariners Club. We're in dangerous waters. Ryder is perfectly capable. I tell you, he's drunk. He has no right to be on that bridge. If you don't believe me, call him. Very well, Mr. Grant. Bridge. Ryder. First mate Ryder in the bridge, sir. Lights are bright all as well. Uh, Ryder, Grant has a watch until eight bells. It's all right, Chris. Got everything under control. Tell Grant to turn in. Listen, Ryder. Never mind, Chris. Don't worry, you little head. I'm in charge here. Yep. <laughs> I'm in charge. <laughs> what did he say? Mr. Ryder's in charge. He's perfectly capable of standing the watch if he chooses. Now, wait a minute. Let's skip the double talk. It's my watch. My name's on the log. It's my responsibility to see that this ship stays on its course for the next three hours. You'd better go to your quarters, Mr. Grant. Captain Quist, don't you care what happens to your ship? Mr. Ryder's been sailing for 15 years. Yeah, and every time he gets a few drinks under his belt, he thinks he's Columbus. This isn't the first time, Captain. He's done it before. I can't understand why you let him get by with it. You're here to take orders, Grant. Not to tell me how to run my ship. Now get down to your cabin. He's got something on you, hasn't he? Huh? What do you mean? Nothing. There just ought to be a reason why you let Ryder get by with murder. Why he has complete command of the ship three days running while you sit in your cabin. Get out of here, Grant. There's something wrong, isn't there, Captain? Get out of here before I throw you an iron. All right, Captain Quist. I'm just trying to do my duty as an officer. If you want to trust your ship to a rum pot, go ahead. Yes, Captain Quist, there is something wrong, isn't there? Ryder has plenty on you, hasn't he? Enough to make you overlook the fact that the first duty of a master is to the safety of his ship. Enough to make you afraid to face Ryder and force the issue. It worries you, doesn't it? 
Instead of turning in, you sit at your desk in the cabin, thinking, wishing there were a way out. Then at six bells, an hour before midnight, you hear a strange and terrifying sound. The roar of the surf to the starboard. It's close, Captain, too close. Good Lord, Roddy. Do you know what you're doing? Uh, go away, Chris. I'm busy. Give me that wheel. I'm sure of this. You'll ship. pile us up. You'll pile us up on the rocks. Watch your helm, man. Get out of here. Watch your helm. Hell. Well, Chris, Grant was right, wasn't he? The Carson City did pile on the rocks, a total loss. Two sailors dead, the valuable cargo gone. But there is an out, isn't there? Ryder's name doesn't appear on the log. Nobody knows he was at the wheel but you. And Charles Grant, second mate. And Ryder must be cleared if you're to continue your career. You don't care what happens, do you, Quiz? Nothing matters now except getting Ryder off. Your life on the sea is at stake. So you play ball because of the strange hold Ryder has on you. You testify that Grant was on the bridge at the critical moment, that in your opinion he's guilty of gross negligence. And the court agrees with you. Second mate Grant, will you rise and face the court? It is the finding of this court that on the night of May 11th, you as the officer in charge were guilty of criminal negligence, resulting in the wreck of the ship Carson City, with the loss of two lives and an entire cargo. You are therefore sentenced to a year and a day in the federal penitentiary, with cancellation of your credentials as an officer in the United States Merchant Marine. Do you have anything to say? No, Your Honor. Nothing. To the court. This court is declared adjourned. <laughs> Congratulations, Captain. I'm sorry, Mr. Grant. I was right, wasn't I? Ryder does have something on you. I said I'm sorry, Mr. Grant. Perjury doesn't come easy. There's got to be a reason. I'm sorry, too, Captain Quiss. I'm sorry for you. Because if it takes me a lifetime, I'm going to hang this wrap around your neck and watch you sink. Signal. New Signal Gasoline. With the prologue of tonight's story, The Seeing Eye, the Signal Oil Company brings you another of the strange tales by The Whistler. Have you seen the new 1946 cars now being displayed? They're nice, aren't they? But if you've also inquired about delivery dates, you know you're likely to be driving your present car a good while longer. No need to wait any longer, however, for the fun of improved driving performance. No, sir. For with new signal gasoline in your tank, you actually feel your present car get young again right now. And that's because new signal isn't just pre-war quality gasoline, not just old-style gasoline improved but an entirely new type, super fuel. There's a long scientific explanation about how chemists actually rearrange the atoms in gasoline molecules to put quicker starting, faster pickup, higher anti-knock, and longer mileage into new signal gasoline. But for the easy way to prove these advantages, just drive into one of the friendly stations displaying Signal's familiar yellow and black circle sign. Get a tank full of new signal gasoline. As you step on the accelerator... Your own motor will show you why new signal gasoline actually is. The post-war gasoline you can prove is superior. And now, back to the whistler. Yes, Captain Quist, the end of your career on the sea began the night that the Carson City piled up and sank on a reef off the Florida coast and sent Charles Grant, your innocent second mate, to prison for criminal negligence. There was no other way, you told yourself. Ryder must be cleared at all costs. And as he said, 
You're indispensable to each other. During the years that follow, you make one ironclad request before each sailing. Ryder must go as first mate. Yes, Quist, the partnership works well during those four years. Until one day when your current vessel, the Patricia K, pulls at her moorings in the port of Cape Town, South Africa, anxious to be off on the return trip to New Orleans with her cargo of hemp, leather, and drugs. You're waiting on the bridge for a new officer to arrive. Second mate Charles Grant reporting for duty, sir. Grant? Surprised, Captain? What are you doing here? I'm shipping aboard a second mate. Any objections? Oh, yeah. See here, Grant, I... What's the matter, Captain? Nervous? Hey. I'm sorry, Grant. You won't do. I'll call the agent good. and tell him... He'll tell you I'm aboard the Patricia K on orders from the home office. You better have a good reason, Captain. Your record shows... I'm not shows... worried about my record, Captain, and the home office isn't either. I'm surprised you're willing to bring up the matter of records, Captain. See here, Mr. Grant. Sorry, Captain. All I have to say, Mr. Grant, is... that you'd better be sure you handle your duties well. The past is gone. I'd rather not discuss it. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, I'm glad they've given you a new chance. You'll find I haven't changed. But you have, Captain. How's that? I never saw you wearing dark glasses before. Perhaps that's why you didn't recognize me when I walked up just now. Uh, yes, yes, of course. I. You'd better go to your cabin, Mr. Grant. Stow your gear. All right, sir. <laughs> Ryder, open up. Yeah, what's the matter? I, I don't know. Wait a minute now. Take it easy. Look out. Look out in there. Oh, oh I'm sorry. You're I... sorry. It was a fifth of my best bourbon, you stupid stumble bum. Why don't you hang out a sign? I didn't see it. Of course you didn't see it. One more like that, and I'm going to hand you a white cane. Where's your sense? I told you to stay on the bridge till I came up. What do the men think when they see you stumbling around on deck? Listen, Ryder, I'm got... through listening. You're falling to pieces, Quiz. I'm tired of playing seeing eye for you every time you have one of these spells. If I had the brains I was born with, I'd make you retire. I'd kill you first. You know, I think you would. Come on. We'd better cast off. Got a half hour to clear the port. The new second mate aboard? Yes. Who is he? That's why I came here. He's not a new second mate, Ryder. Oh, who is he? Grant. Grant? What are you talking about? You heard what I said? He's been in stir. He hasn't got a license. He's here on orders from the home office. Nothing I can do. What do you mean there's nothing you can do? That guy can't sail. That's all there is to it. I called the agent. Call the agent. the agent. Good Lord, why didn't you have him shanghaied? I tell you, that guy's not going to sail. I'm going up there. I'm now, wait a minute, Ryder. Shut up. I'm going up Ryder! there. Ryder! I'm still in command of the ship. And I want you to remember that. If there were anything I could do, I'd do it. But unfortunately, there isn't. Grant's on board for the voyage, and we've got to make the best of it. All right. I'll make the best of it. And I'll make the best of it when we get to New Orleans, too. Oh? No? Whether you like it or not, Quiz, this is your last voyage. I'm through hanging on to a guy who's fallen to pieces. What does that mean? Grant isn't dumb. And he isn't here for the trip. If you had the brains you were born with, you'd have seen it and brushed him off. It wasn't possible. I don't care whether it was possible or not. It had to be done. And if we're lucky enough to keep him guessing this trip, you're going to decide to retire when we get to New Orleans. And if I don't? The home office is going to be surprised to discover that one of their top skippers has a habit of going blind every six weeks. Wait, you... And don't try to scare me with that negligence charge. You'd go up just as fast as I would, and for just as long. Who are you? And one other thing. You're going to recommend your bright young first mate to succeed you. How does that sound to you, Quiz? Captain Ted Ryder. It's hard to take, isn't it, Quiz? 
the idea of giving up your ship, of leaving the sea forever, hardly seems real to you. In your bunk that night, after the Patricia K has put out into the South Atlantic, you try and think back over the past four years. You remember the two men who died on the Carson City, two men whose lives ought to be on your conscience, two men who'd be sailing today if you cared about anything but Martin Quist, ship's master. Perjury, bribery, the conviction of an innocent man. Nothing mattered, did it? Finally, you sleep, although the pain in your eyes tells you another attack is coming on in earnest. All you can make out the next morning as you walk down the deck to the bridge is the hazy line of the horizon and the dull blur of the ship plodding forward against a head-on swell. You arrive to find Grant there, alone. Morning, Grant. Hello. <coughs> oh, I... What happened? Nothing. I just bumped into the chart table. Why don't you take those dark glasses off? Why don't you stop asking me questions, Mr. Grant? That's one way of finding out things, that's all. Happens to be the wrong way at the moment. Hand me my log. What? Don't what me, Mr. Grant. Hand me my log. Why? Captain, it's right in front of you on the table. Huh? Yeah. Yes, I... I didn't notice it. Don't you feel well? I feel quite well, thank you. I'm glad to hear it, sir. Uh, what do you suppose that schooner is doing on our starboard bow? Never saw a ship that small in the South Atlantic. Huh? Where? Over there. See her? Huh. Oh, yes. How do you make her out? Uh, coastwise African trader, probably. We're only a day out. Can't be more than 100 feet. Or would you say she was larger? I'm not interested in whether she's 100 feet or 1,000 feet long, Mr. Grant. Turn to your wheel. Yeah. Who are you trying to kid, Captain? What do you mean? You wear dark glasses day and night. You bump into the table. You can't see the log. Who said I can't see the log? You might as well know, Mr. Grant, that if I choose to wear pink glasses and a green jacket, I'll do so. It so happens it's none of your business. On the open sea, the captain's eyes are everybody's business. It has nothing to do with my eyes. It was an accident? Of course. That... That ship out there, is that an accident, too? What are you getting at? I can see that ship perfectly well. I apologize, Captain. I was wrong about your eyes. You have excellent vision. Thank you. It takes a good man to see over the horizon. What do you mean? That's where she must be. There isn't any ship out there. Tell me, Captain, what made you think you'd get away with it? A ship's captain without eyes. But I, you I, I you told that you I... I felt sorry for you once. I still do. That's where the partnership comes in, isn't it? Your brains and rider's eyes. Now, listen, Grant. You'd do anything to keep that lousy master's license, wouldn't you? You'd stab your best friend in the back, buy and sell witnesses, perjure yourself. Yeah, you'd even kill me if you thought you'd get away with it. Why, Quiz? Why didn't you have sense enough to throw in the towel before it got too big for you? You wouldn't understand. You bet I don't understand. And the families of those two men in the Carson City don't understand either. You're a murderer, Quiss. I suppose you know that. Will you stop it, Grant? Stop That's it! That's exactly what I'm going to do. When we get to New Orleans, I'm going to stop it. For good this time. You can buy all the witnesses in the world, Quiss, but it won't do you any good. This time it's going to stick. <laughs> Yes, Ryder was right, wasn't he, Captain Quiss? You should have done anything to keep Grant off the ship. But it's too late now. He knows your secret. Each day brings the Patricia K closer to New Orleans in the end. You decide to play for time, order the course of the ship changed, sending it north to Cape Verde, four days out of its way, hoping your eyes will improve, that by the time you arrive in New Orleans, your vision will be sharp and clear and defensible. But it continues to get worse until finally ten days out of New Orleans you can't see at all. And then one night out of a clear sky something happens. The opportunity you've been waiting for. As the ship approaches the Florida Keys not far from where the Carson City foundered, you hear a scuffle outside your cabin. All right, now get away from there. Right? What's going on here? Well, Kelly, come here. Try and pull it again, will you? Kelly! Kelly okay, I'll let you go. There. Now, you're... Ugh. All right, get up, Ryder. 
Mr. Grant. This is none of your business, Quist. Get up, Ryder, or I'll pull you up. Oh, wait a minute, Grant. Kelly, grab me. Let go of me, Kelly. Thank God Get him, Captain. Get him. Barnes. Yeah. Take care of Ryder here. Kill him, Mr. O'Toole. Kill him. Ryder, shut up. He's okay, mate. Now, take it easy. Don't get you for this crowd. That's Ryder. enough, Ryder. Shall I put them in irons, Captain? No, Kelly. But, Captain... It won't be necessary, Mr. Kelly. Take them to their cabins. That gave you an idea, didn't it, Quiz? There's a way out after all. You feel your way back into your cabin and think. Ryder was up to his old tricks again, drunk, trying to take the wheel away from Grant. It was time perfectly, wasn't it, Captain? Two competent witnesses present, two reliable supporters, both of whom heard Ryder swear he was going to kill Grant. The men are puzzled as to why you didn't throw them in irons. But there's a good reason. They have to be free to come and go as they please during the next night. Free to jump through the hoops you're preparing for them. You go to your cabin after dinner the next night and sit at your table thinking it through. Then at 7 o'clock, you call Grant. Did you want to see me, Captain? Did you? Oh. Oh, it's you. Yes. I've been standing here for some time. Uh, Grant, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. Perhaps you wondered why I didn't exercise my authority when you and Ryder had that scuffle last night. I didn't expect Ryder to get it, if that's what you mean. As a matter of fact, I've... Well, I've come to the conclusion you're right. What do you want? When's your trick at the wheel tonight? I'm on at eight bells, replacing Ryder. I see. I've decided to clear you, Mr. Grant. I'm going to put it in writing. It's apparent I'm not much good on the sea anymore, and at least I can try to right the wrong I've done. What? I know it's hard to believe. But I'm going to ask you to keep it to yourself until we arrive. Ryder mustn't know about it. But, but how can you? I can manage a typewriter quite nicely, thank you. I'm not asking for any thanks. I don't deserve anything. I'll go that far with you. Report here just before you go and watch. Eight bull shop. Is that clear? You're a little unpredictable, Quiss. I didn't ask for your opinion. I ask whether or not it was clear. Very well, Captain. I'll be back at eight bells. You were afraid of that one, weren't you, Quiss? But he fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. You'll be ready for him at eight bells with Ryder conveniently alone, unseen on the bridge. You can tell he's alone. Anyone going to the bridge must pass the narrow strip of deck outside your door. Quietly, you feel around in the drawer of your chest. Ryder's navy revolver, right where you put it this morning. Now the knife and some string. You walk carefully to the door and run your hands over the panel to get just the right spot, breast high, a little to your right, on the line with Grant's heart as he comes in the door. You drive in the point of the knife and tie the string to the knife handle. Then you walk back to the desk, drawing the string with you. At the desk, you sit down. You pick up the gun and prop it up with the barrel running alongside the tight string. When the gun is properly lined up, you pull the string and draw the knife toward you. You put them back in the drawer. Then you release the safety catch on the gun and wait. You're ready for him now, aren't you? With the gun accurately aimed at the spot in the doorway where the bullet will count most when Grant opens that door. It seems like hours. Your hand is cramped around the gun, but you don't relax for a second. There's determination in your mind. You're doing it for the sea, and you won't give it up for anyone. Then...
Whistler will return with a strange ending of tonight's story in just a moment. Meantime, with chill winter weather definitely here, don't forget that you're not the only one who'll be needing winter clothes and a winter diet to keep feeling fit. It's just as important for your car to have Signal's winter diet to keep wear down when the thermometer's down. For the transmission and differential, that means draining, flushing, and refilling with Signal winter gear lubricant. If it's been 5,000 miles since your front wheel bearings were serviced, now's the time to have them removed, thoroughly cleaned, and repacked with Signal Long Life Wheel Bearing Grease. And for your motor, it's high time to drain out summer weight oil and refill with real winter protection. Refill with Signal Pen, the pure Pennsylvania oil with a famous fighting film that flows freely even on coldest mornings. With this complete Signal diet, your car has the cold weather lubricants it needs to help keep it purring through another winter. And the place to get it is at that friendly station displaying Signal's familiar yellow and black circle sign, your neighborhood Signal gasoline dealer. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, it's over now, isn't it, Captain Quiss? Your system worked. The second shot wasn't necessary. You're shaking as you get out of the chair and wipe the fingerprints off the gun, throwing it on the deck beside the body. Then you call the engine room and order Kelly to the cabin. You're ready for him when he arrives. Good Lord, what's happened? You were right, Kelly. I should have put them in irons. Seems that Ryder just shot Mr. Grant. What? Where is he? Ryder? Yes. Yes, throw him in the brig immediately. But, but Captain, are you blind? What do you mean? Why, this is Ryder here. On the floor. What? I didn't know it. All I heard was a scuffle and I... Minute, Quiss. Grant! I'm in charge now, Kelly. Put Captain Quiss in irons. Captain! He's lying out of charge, you. You're even more stupid than I thought, Quiss. Take him away, Kelly. He's Wait a... a minute. Do you know why Ryder came here, Quiss? Because I didn't show up for my trick at the wheel. I didn't show up because I've been here. Right in this room. From the time you called me in here an hour ago. It was quite a show you put on for me, Quiss. I'll want the knife and string. May need them to illustrate my lecture when we get into New Orleans. Grant, no. No! Oh, Kelly. I'm sorry for the poor guy. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program produced by George W. Allen with tonight's story by John Michael Hayes and Bud Swanton, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking, reminding you to look for those familiar yellow and black circle signs that identify those popular Signal Oil stations in seven western states, from Canada to Mexico. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>